an organism is a complete living thing. Organisms are very complex, and they're organized into varying levels of complexity. Those levels include cells, tissues, organs, and organ systems. All matter, both living and non-living, is made of atoms and molecules. These small particles are the simplest and smallest level of organization. Molecules are used to build all of the organelles that carry out specific cellular processes. Mitochondria are organelles that perform energy conversions. And, and Golgi bodies are organelles that modify and package new proteins. These are just a couple of examples of organelles and the processes that they carry out. All of the organelles and cell parts come together to create cells. Cells are considered the building blocks of life, and all living things are made from cells. Cells are the simplest structures that can be classified as complete organisms. That means that there are some living things that are made of just one cell. Multicellular organisms contain groups of specialized cells. Groups of specialized cells are called tissues. Blood, adipose or fat tissue, and muscle tissue are all examples of tissues that you can find inside animals. Organs are a collection of tissues that serve a common function. Being made of different tissues allows organs to complete complex tasks for the body. The brain, heart, liver, bones, and intestines are all examples of organs that are found at this level. Some jobs, like breathing in and out or digesting a meal, require more than one organ to work together. Groups of organs that work together are called organ systems. You can see here that the digestive system, skeletal system, respiratory system, and nervous system all contain multiple organs. It's important that you understand that organ systems can also be called body systems. All of these levels work together to create a single multicellular organism. Remember that atoms and molecules are the simplest level of organization. Each level of organization becomes more and more complex until they all work together to form one complete organism. Each individual living thing is called an organism. So this one buffalo is a single complete organism. All of the organisms from a single species that live in an area make up a population. So the entire herd of buffalo make up the buffalo population. You've probably heard the word population in your social studies class. When we talk about the population of a city, we're referring to all of the members of the human species that live in that area. The different populations of living things interacting in an area are called a community. Scientists can talk about the animal community or the plant community, or they can be more specific and talk about the bird community or the mammal community. However, Communities are always made up of living things that are found interacting in an area. An ecosystem contains all of the biotic and abiotic factors in an area. That means when we're describing an ecosystem, we're talking about both the living and the non-living things. When describing an ecosystem, we'll still talk about the plants and animals, but we'll also discuss things like the amount of rainfall and the quality of the air and the soil. We can also describe an ecosystem as being the community of living things together with the environmental factors that they interact with. This is just another way of saying the exact same thing. Anytime we talk about both the living and non-living components of an area, we're describing an ecosystem. Ecosystems do not have to be large. Any area that contains living and non-living factors can be defined as an ecosystem. So this tiny terrarium, which contains plants and sand and water, is an ecosystem. And in the intestines of animals, you can find a community of bacteria, along with water and minerals and nutrients. So since there are both living and non-living factors inside the intestines, the intestines can be defined as an ecosystem.